Now, I have 10 minutes. I wasn't sure I was going to get to this stage, but I can't help but say something about this whole coronavirus thing, if you want me to. Yes. So, again, when you know Steiner, you have the answers to the test, but you have to then figure out the details. In 1918, after the um, uh, huge, biggest pandemic, the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, Steiner was asked, what was this all about? And he said, well, viruses are simply excretions of a toxic cell. Viruses are pieces of DNA or RNA with a few other proteins. They butt out from the cell. They happen when the cell is poisoned. They are not the cause of anything. And the first way I would encourage you to think about this is if you are a famous dolphin doctor, right, and you have been studying dolphins in the Arctic Circle for hundreds of years, or at least a long time, and the dolphins were fine, and then they call you up, Fred, all the dolphins, or a lot of the dolphins are dying in the Arctic Circle, can you come and investigate, right? And you have one question to ask. So, show of hands, how many of you would say, I want to investigate a dolphin to see the genetic makeup of that dolphin? Nobody, because that's stupid. <laughs> how many of you would say, I want to see if this dolphin and that dolphin has a virus because it might be contagious and that's why all these dolphins are getting sick. That fellow. How many of you would say, excuse my French here, somebody put some shit in the water here? <laughs> like Exxon Valdez? Anybody? Everybody. Because that's what happened. And the cells get poisoned. They try to purify themselves by excreting debris, which we call viruses. If you, if you go to the current theory of viruses called exosomes and the latest head of the NIH giving a talk on the complexity of viruses, you will see this is perfectly in line with the current thinking on what a virus really is. I had a dramatic example of this when I was growing up. Out, right outside our house, there was a wetlands and they were full of frogs, and the frogs kept me up at night, so I taped the windows, and they were, in the spring it was, they made a big racket. And then over time, the frogs were all gone. How many thinks the, virus, the frogs had a genetic disease? How many thinks the, vi the frogs had a virus? How many thinks somebody put DDT into the water? That's what happened. Diseases are poisoning. It's one of the reasons why vaccines... So, let me skip that for a minute. So what happened in 1918? There was a huge, in every, every pandemic in the last 150 years, there was an, a quantum leap in the electrification of the Earth. In 1918, late, uh, late fall of 1917, there was the introduction of radio waves around the world. Whenever you expose any biological system to a new electromagnetic field, you poison it, you kill some, and the rest go into a kind of suspended animation so that, interestingly, they live a little bit longer and sicker. And then starts in World War II with the next pandemic with the introduction of radar equipment all over the Earth, blanketing the entire Earth in radar fields. First time humans have ever been exposed to that. In 1968, there was the Hong Kong flu, and it was the first time the Earth has a protective layer in the Van Allen belt, which essentially integrates the cosmic uh, fields from the sun and the Earth, from the moon and Jupiter, etc., integrates that and essentially distributes that to the living beings of the Earth. And we put satellites emitting radioactive frequencies in the Van Allen belt. Within six months, we had a new viral pandemic. Why viral? Because the people are poisoned, they excrete toxins, they look like viruses,
people think it's, an, it's a flu epidemic. In the 1918 the, uh, epidemic, the Boston Health Department decided to investigate the contagiousness of this. So they, believe it or not, took hundreds of people with the flu and they sucked the snot out of their nose and injected it into the healthy people who didn't have the flu. And not one time could they make the next person sick. They did this over and over again and they were not able to demonstrate contagion. They even did it with horses who apparently got the Spanish flu and they put bags over their head and the horses sneezed in the bag and they put the bag over the next horse and not one horse got sick. You can read about this in a book called The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg who chronicles all the steps in the electrification of the earth and how within six months there was a new flu pandemic all over the world. And when you invest, when you hear the normal uh, explanations, how did it go from Kansas to South Africa in two weeks? So the entire world got the symptoms at the same time, in spite of the fact that the mode of transportation was horseback and boats, and there's no explanation for it. They just say, we don't know how that happened. But when you think about it, with these radio waves and other frequencies that some of you have in your pocket and on your wrist, you can send a signal to Japan and it arrives instantaneously. So any of you who don't believe there is an electromagnetic field that communicates globally within seconds, just is not paying attention to this. And I will only finish by pointing out that there has been a dramatic and quantum leap in the last six months with the electrification of the Earth. And I'm sure a lot of you know what that is. It's called 5G, where they now have 20,000 radiation-emitting satellites, just like the radiation-emitting thing in your pocket and on your wrist and that you use all the time. That is not compatible with health. I'm sorry to say it, it's not compatible with health. That is a water destructuring device. And for any of you who say, yeah, well, well, we're not electrical beings, we're just physical matter, then don't bother doing an EKG or an EEG or a nerve conduction test because we are electrical beings and the chemicals are only the byproduct of those electrical impulses. And I'll finish with anybody want to make one guess as to where the first completely blanketed 5G city in the world was. Exactly. So when you start thinking about this, we are in an existential crisis here, folks, the likes of which humankind has never seen. And I don't want to go all Old Testament prophet on you, uh, but this is something that is unprecedented. The, the putting of 100,000 satellites in the very blanket of the Earth. And by the way, as I was going to say earlier, this actually has something to do with the vaccine question. And this got brought home to me because about a year ago or so, I had a patient who came in who was totally fine, a surfer and all, and then he broke his... He works as an electrician putting in Wi-Fi systems for very wealthy people. Electricians have a very high mortality rate, but he was fine. And then he breaks his arm and he gets a metal plate put in his arm. Three months later, he couldn't get out of bed and was total, you know, heart irregularities, just total collapse. The susceptibility has to do with how much metal you have in your body, as well as the quality of the water in your cells. So if you start injecting aluminum in people, they become receptors for absorbing increased electromagnetic fields. And that is a perfect storm for the kind of deterioration of the species, which is what we're now experiencing. And I'm just going to finish with one more thing, which I like to, is a quote from Rudolf Steiner. And by the way, this was around 1917. So there was a different time. In times when there were no electrical currents, when the air was not swarming with electrical influ influences, we're talking 1917, it was easier to be human. 
For this reason, in order to be human at all today, it is necessary to expend much stronger spiritual capacities than was necessary a century ago. So I'll just leave you with whatever you can do to increase your spiritual capacities because it's really damn hard to be human being these days. So thanks for listening.